Welcome to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal, where our goal is to change the way you practice dentistry by helping you achieve clinical, financial, and personal balance. Now, here's your host, T-Bone. Week, another episode of the T-Bone Speaks podcast. I hope everybody's having a great 2021. And this week, we're going to talk about three key performance indicators, three KPIs that you should be tracking to that you're probably not necessarily tracking. So let's get into that. But before we do, I'm going to turn it over to Meredith and let her talk about our number one and favorite sponsor, 3D Dentists. Hi, everyone. We are so excited to be on a roll for 2021 and have everyone here visiting with us, taking courses, online courses, um, joining us virtually. It has been a fun ride. Um, Before we get into things, I do want to mention we have a new class for 2021. We have an uh, adult orthodontic, uh, adult cosmetic orthos, ortho foundations with Dr. Matt Standridge. Uh, This program is new for this year, and I think it's going to be really popular. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we did in our practice in 2018, 19, and kind of in 18, 20, yeah. uh, is uh, we kind of uh, uh, made a commitment to improving our orthodontic part of our practice. Mm-hmm. And that's not trying to, I want to get it bigger, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But for me right now, it's about getting to five, three to five cases per month yeah. consistently uh, because that's another 20 to 25 grand in revenue each yeah. month. And over the course of a year, that adds up to a lot of money. And uh, so... That's why when we did this, a lot of that started from understanding ortho, understanding all of that. And Matt Standridge is one of uh, the very best up and coming orthodontic instructors out there. Uh, And so we focus on straight wire with brackets and uh, clear liner therapy. So we want to kind of cover both aspects in that. And uh, he does a phenomenal job. So we're super excited to have uh, that program uh, here in 2021 at 3D Dentist to complete <laughs> our SOI, sleep, ortho, and yes. implants. So now we have uh, that type of training uh, available to everybody. Excited about that. Well, before we get into today's episode, I do have a review. It says, T-Bone rocks. I love T-Bone and everything that he does. This podcast is no different. His take on all the topics be it clinical or non-clinical, is simple, innovative, and out of the box. He provides you with simple takeaways that can be applied to everyday dentistry. Thank you for taking the time to do this. More power to you. Was that my mom? I know. <laughs> Goodness, you guys are really nice. Oh, I, you know what I forgot to do on one of our previous episodes? Yeah. I forgot to give a shout out to our producer for this episode yeah. and the other episode. Uh-huh. My daughter, Aria Agarwal <laughs> from so Aria special. Creations, yeah. right? Uh, who, who entrepreneurially made masks mm-hmm. last summer for everybody during COVID, custom masks. Now you can rent her as a podcast producer. Yeah. So she has a studio and everything. Well, she doesn't, she gets access to (laughs) T-Bone Studio. (laughs) That she runs. So (laughs) that she runs. Now hers. But she's super embarrassed by me pointing her out. But that's okay, right, Arya, baby? (laughs) Well, let's get (laughs) let's get into today's episode of three KPIs you should be paying close attention to. Yeah. So let's start with number one. Uh, So but actually let's back up for a second. So listen, there are so many softwares out there. There are mm-hmm. so many different things with the proliferation of corporate bean counter DSOs. There's so many, so much, so much emphasis on numbers and tracking and all this stuff. And, and I got to be honest with you, it's overwhelming to me. Uh, and I, I, get, I get flustered by it. That's a lot. So uh, I'm not trying to say that we got to get it complicated. I just want to keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm not saying these are the only numbers that we keep close yeah. attention to, but I believe that if we focus on these three numbers, okay, that we will see our practices grow and expand over the coming years, okay? okay. The three areas are a number for hygiene, mm-hmm. because hygiene is the breadth of your overall general practice. The more hygiene you see, the more general dentistry you do. It's pretty, right. pretty plain and simple. The numbers bear that out. Number two is what type of dentistry you're doing, a treatment mix percentage. And number three is how many big cases are you doing? But I look at that differently because I look at that from a 
what percentage of your collections is through payment plans. So mm -hmm. those are the three KPIs that I want to briefly touch on and go into a little bit of detail on each of those. And then I want you to start tracking this and that then I want to see what happens after a month or two of looking at this, or even quite frankly, when you look at your treatment mix percentage, what insight you're going to get right away. So let me go ahead and start with hygiene. Okay. So with hygiene, we're keeping track of two main things. Okay. One is our pre appoint schedule. Okay. In other words, how many of our active patient base already have a hygiene appointment for the future? Okay. We want to make sure that we're keeping that, keeping up with that. So is it 70%? Is it 80%? Is it, uh, if you have 2000 active patients, do you have 1600 of them with a scheduled appointment, uh, moving forward? So for, for your hygiene, so you got to keep track of that re pre appoint and we want to keep track of reappointment rate. In other words, that would be the number of patients your hygienist see today and that's pre-scheduled for a future three, four, six month cleaning. And that number we want to be somewhere in the 85 to 90% ballpark. So in other words, if your hygienist sees eight patients a day, which is pretty typical, we want to see them schedule seven of those patients for their next recall visit before they leave today's practice. Now, the reason I focus on those two main things on the hygiene side is it keeps track of the future. It's showing me where my hygiene department is, where my, you know, recurring shoppers or recurring patients are coming from. Because what we all know is that when you have people come in consistently for your hygiene visits, your diagnosis goes up, your restorative dentistry goes up, your general practice is more sustainable and more foundationally strong moving forward. So that's what we're looking at on the hygiene side of thing is your pre-appoint, which is what percentage of your active patient base has a future hygiene appointment and your reappoint rate. In other words, your hygienist, how many of those patients are scheduling today for the next cleaning visit? And many of you may be thinking, why, why is that any different? Because we know people fall off. So if you schedule seven today for the future, seven of the eight, then we know two or three of those are going to fall off. And then the, the pre-appointment rate is where you're going to catch up with your overdue recall uh, patients so that you can keep track and, and work that list. And we saw that through the big dip, which came in October and November of 2020 for all of us from the six months after uh, the COVID shutdown. I think the key thing you said is that your hygienists are scheduling six months out. Like, yeah. okay, they came in Monday at 2 p.m. So it sounds like Mondays at 2 p.m. work for you will March the 3rd, which is a Monday at 2 p.m. also work for you in 2021 yeah. um, because you take them up front and they're like, oh, I'll just call. Right. You know, or there's someone else waiting up there or now it's one more person they have to interact with. Oh, I'll, I'll just call. Or you guys will call me, right? That's the worst one. Right. We uh, won't call you till it's too late. Right, exactly. You know? or, or we don't have time available. Right. Or we're looking to fill something, which is hardly ever. Right. So, no, just get them on the schedule, and then you can always rearrange it then. Move it two weeks yeah. out, move it two weeks out, and go from there. Always be proactive. Right. I think... So hygiene, pre-appoint, and reappoint is mm -hmm. probably number one on your list. And then um, treatment mix. I was really interested yeah. in this when we were talking about it. Um, it was kind of like one of those aha moments, like where should everything be? Like what I was asking, like what percentages? But then I think when you said, well, it all comes from hygiene and start there. Yeah. So one of the things I, te I, I pay close attention to is my treatment mix percentages uh, in revenue in our practice. And I break it down. I want to kind of go through what, what we look at is I look at my hygiene department, which are going to be profi, perio, and guards in our practice because we do our guards through hygiene. Okay. I look at general dentistry as one uh, uh, vertical in the practice. And with general dentistry, that's going to be exams, fillings, crowns, root canals, uh, and basic extractions. So that's going to be my general dentistry. Uh, then I look at my advanced dentistry, and that's typically going to be um, six units of crown and bridge or more. So in other words, when I'm doing veneers, full mouth rehab, or partial veneers, or I'm sedating a patient and doing six crowns all at a single visit, 
uh, you know, where you prep them all at once and they're paying for it all at once. So I consider that advanced restorative and that's another vertical. And then I break down what we teach really well here at 3D Dentist, our implant practice, our sleep apnea practice, and our ortho practice. So what I'm doing is, is I'm taking our overall production and collect uh, production and I'm breaking it down into those verticals, hygiene, general dentistry, advanced general dentistry, implants, ortho, and sleep, and I'm keeping track of that. And when I first did this, probably about eight or nine years ago, what, it, what I saw was that 80, 80 to 90 percent of my practice was either hygiene or general dentistry. And what, that's not what I wanted it to be. I'm not saying there's something wrong with that, but that's not what I wanted it to be. I wanted to be focused on implants. I wanted to be focused on sleep. And that's really where, for me, the aha moment came in that I needed to be more fine-tuned to those areas of advanced restorative implants, ortho, and sleep, because that meant for me, that's how I was going to grow. Right. That's how I was going to be less insurance dependent. That's how I was going to be able to bring in another dental provider within our practice and not necessarily have to double our practice because to double your general dentistry, you have to double your physical space. You have to mm -hmm. double your hours. You have to double all those things. But and by work a lot harder. Yeah, you know, some people like physical yeah, labor. I was going to say, that was the only way. So we want to focus on your treatment mix percentage in those verticals. Uh, uh, again, hygiene, general dentistry, advanced restorative dentistry, implants, ortho, and sleep. Uh, and then if, you know, let's say you're a high endo type of practice, then maybe endo is one of your verticals and you take that mm -hmm. out of general dentistry right. because you love doing endo. You might bring that out. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm looking at on a regular basis of how my treatment mix percentage is going. Okay. So we have, um, for three KPI, KPIs, you should be paying close attention to. We have uh, treatment mix percentage, and we've talked about hygiene pre-appoint and reappoint rates. So our last one is um, payment plan percentages. Yeah. So, you know, when I, I learned this from I, all this stuff, I learned from other people or stuff like yeah. that, you know, this is very, very little is my own invention, nothing new under the sun. Um, one of the things I learned very early on, uh, was, uh, at the time it was third party payment plans. And what we learned then was that 10 to 15%, the best practices had 10 to 15% of their collections came through third party financing or third party payments. And the reason for that is if you're totally dependent on insurance, there's some negatives to that. If you're totally dependent on what patients can afford to pay you all up front or their portion all up front, there's a limitation that you're setting for yourself. So the thought process behind tracking what percentage of your patients are paying via payment plan, because back then when I started 20 years ago, everything was third-party payment plans. And today it's third-party payment plans and in-house payment plans. And, and that means you're presenting more dentistry. You're getting patients to do more dentistry at one time because you're making it affordable. And I've, we've discussed this at length in our practice about the, and on our podcast about the importance of in-office payment plans mm -hmm. at length. And yeah. we're happy to discuss it more. Yeah. But where, where I'm, what I'm paying close attention to is how much of our collections is coming from payment plans, third party and in-house. And what I want you to shoot for at the beginning part of this is I want this to be in the 15% range. In other words, I want you to go from, you know, most of you, are, most of you listening are probably in the three to five percent range for those of you that have implemented in-office payment plans and your financial menus your financial and menus the, the way menu we've talked about options. you're probably in the 10 12 percent margin somewhere in that ballpark i want you to try to get to 15 percent now best practice and some people will disagree with me i want to see this number in our practice closer to 20 to 25 percent because that means we are taking a little bit more risk we are doing more dentistry. Doing bigger, larger cases. Doing more dentistry at one time. Yeah. 
I don't even want to say larger cases. Yeah. It's just doing more general dentistry, taking that general dentistry and doing three or two or three quadrants at once and moving it into advanced restorative dentistry right. because you're doing more than six units at one time. Right. And people can have a couple of crowns in each quadrant. If you sedate them and do all of it at one time, suddenly that general dentistry over four visits becomes one visit of advanced restorative dentistry. And the easiest and most important way to get people to say yes to that is to allow them to make it affordable through payment plans, whether third party or in-house. So And offer sedation. And offer sedation. If you're not doing sedation, we also have a course for that. <laughs> uh, in April, we have our next course with Dr. Brian McGue on oral uh, conscious sedation. You just built that right in. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I mean, but you said it. You said, you know, mm -hmm. sedate them, do three quadrants at once, but nobody wants to lay there for oh. four hours for three quadrants at once, five hours. Yeah. But with sedation, it makes it easy Absolutely. for someone who's not even nervous. Absolutely. So, so that's what we want to kind of look at. And so again, I'm interested in you tracking this number and seeing where you're at, knowing your score. Okay. Seeing where you measure up. Okay. And then I want you to make a plan of how you're going to get to good practice level and best practice levels, okay? And I promise you that if you make your goal for the first three, four, five months of 2021 to focus on these three key indicators, you will see your practice move in a better direction, whether that's more profitable, whether that's more revenue, whether that's more of the dentistry you want to do, whether that's just taking back control of your practice. Taking more time off. Whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So, Focus on these, cre th these, oh, I'm sucking today. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. Take a focus on these three key performance indicators, hygiene pre-appoint, reappoint, treatment percentage mix, and your payment plan percentage of your overall collections, and you will see your practice move in a positive direction. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Do me a favor, share this with others, share it on social media, send us your comments and feedback. We love hearing from you and we love getting reviews so that we can expand our reach. Just like your practice grows through referrals, our podcast, our business, all of this grows through your referrals. And thank you so much for being an avid and consistent listener to our podcast. And I'll see you next week. Thanks so much for listening to T-Bone Speaks with Dr. Tarun Agarwal. Remember to keep striving for excellence and we'll catch you on the next episode.